Got your Bibles with you. I want to ask you to turn to the book of Matthew. Uh, we're going to start off where we've been starting each week, Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. This will be our uh, beginning text, and then we'll, we'll jump in. We've been talking uh, for the past couple of weeks about God is with us. The meaning of Christmas is Emmanuel, that he has chosen to come and be with us. And we're, and we're just going to kind of dive into that and see what that really means in our everyday life. What does it mean, Emmanuel? What does it mean that God is, is with me? And so uh, let's read our text. Matthew 1, 23 out of the New Living Translation says, Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and they will call him. Let everybody say the name. Emmanuel, Emmanuel which means translated, God is with us us. That is the good news of the gospel and the good news of Christmas. Let's bow our heads and let's just pray and ask God to speak to us today through his word. Heavenly Father, we invite you, Holy Spirit, we invite you to come. Come in and speak. Rush over the threshold of our souls and, and come into the recess, the hidden places and shine a bright light in our hearts that we may know the truth and the truth will set us free. Remind us that we're never, ever alone. Remind us that you are with us. Help us to see through the eyes of faith, not through the realities of circumstance, but through the eyes of faith that you are greater than any storm that we face. And with that hope, we can carry through, we can press on and endure to the end. God, we thank you that we have a hope because of Christmas in Jesus, Messiah, the Savior of the world. We give you thanks and praise in his name, the strong son of God. And let the church say amen. 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 Well, I'm not going to keep you long. Uh, we've been talking about how God is with us. He walks with us. Uh, uh, David said in the Psalms, where can I go to get away from him? If I scaled the heights, if I went to the low places, he's there everywhere I am. He is there. And so the reality that, that uh, we need to embrace is he's with us, but I want to talk about what does that really mean for him to be with us. Uh, I know, and I'm the same way, we all want a perfect life. That's, that's our culture. We just want this great, perfect, carefree, pain-free life. We want to live life on the mountaintops. And when we're there, we know God is with us because it, it just makes sense. Uh, we've said this, that when things are going our way, it feels like God is with us. The challenge is, is when we're going through the valleys, is he with you? Are you sure he's with you in those times? When you're walking through the wilderness, like we talked about last week, are you sure he's with you? And today we're going to talk about going through storms in life. How do we know he's with us? And so we're going to press into that. God is with us during the storms. One of the things I have discovered in my life is that it's not, it's, it's not the, the most popular people who have spoken into my life and changed my life. It's not the most talented, the most gifted, the, uh, the richest, or the most famous people uh, who have spoken into my life and created good things or influenced me in a positive way. What I've, as I look back over my life and the, and the improvements and the progress I've made in my life, it's been people who have gone through storms and have come out on the other side and have testified that they have seen the pre preserving hand of God and the faithfulness of God in their life preserve them, carry them through to the other side and, and, and hear their story. It's their story that speaks hope to me. Not the famous, not the powerful, not the politician and not the rich. It's the people who have gone through storms, who have come out on the other side and said, let me tell you, he'll do it. He'll, he'll walk with you. He'll see you through. He will be faithful. Those are the stories and the people that have changed my life. The people who said, I've been through the fire. I've been tested. I've been tried. Listen, I've walked through it and come out on the other side, and I can say that God is faithful, and he is well able to save you if you'll trust him through it. So I just want to say there, is, there are storms in life. And we're going to go through them. But the incredible thing about our God is he somehow weaves in a great purpose if we'll let him in those storms. So we're going to talk about how God is God in the storms, how we can trust him, how we can walk with him. The thing about storms in the physical sense is this. Storms just seem to blow up out of nowhere, don't they? 
Did you read the, you, you got the report about the, the tornadoes in Kentucky just the other week? I mean, I was just living my life and rocking along. I didn't even know it happened until boom, you know, it's like you wake up one morning, you read the news, and all of a sudden there's just destruction and devastation seemingly out of nowhere. So that's the nature of storms. And I think the same is true in life. Storms in life can just tend to just hit you blindside. I mean, just like they just come up and blow up out of nowhere. One of the things that we know about storms in the natural sense, the world meteorologi meteorological, is that the, how you say that word, organization, every time a hurricane blows up, they, they, do, they, they name the thing. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you, you watch the Weather Channel and here comes, you know, here comes her, and it's always a woman's name. I'm not going to say anything about that. Just going to let that lay right there. I'm not going there because I want to go home today and eat lunch and have a happy life. Anyway, uh, they name these storms. Uh, you, know, her, you, you know the storm. storm there's, been, there's been devastating. It's like the more destructive and devastating they are, in some weird sense, the more popular they are. You know, like the more attention they get, the more news they get. Hurricane Katrina, Hurricane Sandy, Hurricane Irma, you know, the, the, all these names, all these storms, they get a name. The truth is, is in life, the storms we face in life also have a name. They're going to be storms we face, and it's going to have a name. It may be a storm of betrayal, and it's going to have a name. It may be the storm of divorce. It might be the, the storm of depression, a storm of addiction. The storm of cancer. Storms have a name. Look at somebody say, storms have a name. And they have a name and they, seems like most of the time they blow up out of nowhere and they hit us unaware, unexpecting it. It can almost pull the rug out from under your feet when the storm blows up. And the challenge for us as those who believe and trust in God is this. When the storm blows up and it hits you blindsided, there's questions, and there are real questions that come up. Where is God? Why would he allow this to happen to me? Or maybe this question. Why doesn't God do something? God, why don't you do something? The storms are raging around me. Where are you at? Why would you allow this? Why don't you do something? And so I want to go to the, to the scriptures, and I want to look at a couple of storms today just to get a uh, a response, a pattern, and some instruction for us on how we can navigate the storms of life. So I want to look at Acts 27. There is a, uh, I'll just summarize this story for you. This is regarding the Apostle Paul. He has been uh, traveling, spreading the good news of Jesus, uh, suffered much persecution, but I mean, he is a bulldog for the gospel. He just presses through beatings and hardships and persecutions, fulfilling the call of God on his life. He finds himself uh, being arrested and imprisoned. Um, he, now, there is this, like, this little legal matter that Rome has caught themselves in where they have arrested Paul. They've imprisoned him wrongfully. It just so happens they're not aware that he is actually a Roman citizen. So he goes to the courts and makes his case. Look, guys, you have wrongfully accused me, imprisoned me. And little did they know he is a citizen of Rome. So Paul actually has a case, uh, and he's making his case uh, in Caesarea. So he, he, are, he, he, he presents his case to the court before Festus, uh, and he actually makes an appeal to Caesar, the Caesar of Rome. And so in the story, we see that Paul makes his case. He appeals to Caesar. And so now he's, he's subject for prisoner transport from Caesarea to Italy, to Rome. And so that's, that's his immediate future. Is he's waiting on transport to, to, to get on a ship, be transported to Rome so that he can make his case in the courts before Caesar. So this is where Acts 27 picks up. He gets on a boat for trip, prisoner transport. They, they head across the Mediterranean Sea. And as in life, it happens to all of us, it's going to happen at some time or another, a storm blows up. 
And as they're crossing the sea, this storm is, uh, it's a nor'easter is what it's called in the scripture. And we, and we still see these blow up today in the Mediterranean. Uh, it blows up out of nowhere. The, the ship is in so much danger that they head towards an island to try to get on the back side of the island to protect the ship from the winds, but that doesn't work because the ship then is run up, is, is run aground on sandbars. And so they have got to man the oars and just, I mean, just manpower this ship in the middle of a storm away from being uh, breached on, on the sh- in the shallow waters. And this is where Paul finds himself. Uh, the, the, the storm is so bad that the scriptures say that the ship begins to fall apart. They literally throw ropes underneath the hull of the ship and tighten them down just to hold the ship together in the middle of the sea. And so in Acts 27, 20, uh, this is what the scripture says. It says, when neither sun nor stars appeared for many days and the storm continued raging. Man, doesn't it seem like when you're in a storm, it just keeps on and keeps on and keeps on. It continued raging. And now look at what Paul writes. We finally gave up all hope of being saved. We gave up hope. This is the apostle Paul. This is, I mean, this is the guy, this is the guy who saw Jesus on the road to Damascus. This is the guy who's performed miracles with his prayers and through his hands. This is Paul saying, I'm, I'm a goner. I'm dead. It's over. My life is I am going to die out here in the middle of this sea on this boat. It's over. This is the Apostle Paul saying, writing, I've given up hope because of this storm that I'm facing. And that's what storms tend to do to us. They tend to just, just, just cause our hope to dwindle and dissipate into thin air, don't they? If we're not careful when we face storms, we can give up hope. And this is Paul. And when a storm blows up, you've got to, you you can't lose hope. You may be facing a storm today where your marriage is on the rocks and you, and and, and what is screaming in your head is, we're not going to make it. And you're struggling to hold on, but you feel it just slipping through your fingers and you're giving up hope. Some of you are single and you, 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 you had a hope for a family and to to have children and relationship and, and now here you are and you've given up hope. Maybe you've, maybe you've had hope that you're going you're gonna to get out of debt one day. You're going to work and, and save and, and pay off some stuff, and yet you find yourself today, it feels like you're in the same place you were five years ago, and you just feel like, wow, what's the use? What's the point? I'm, I'm just giving up hope. So you've been in school, and you feel like, I'll never graduate. I've been, I've been trying and trying to get forward, and it's one step forward and two steps back. Some of you... With, uh, you Things happen to you and you struggle in, in, inside your mind. It, depression sets in. Discouragement sets in. And it is so difficult for you to latch on to hope. And that's where Paul was. Paul said, the sun's not shining. We can't see the stars. The, the sky is gloomy, black, and dark. And we have given up hope. So my question is, how did they get from that place of no hope to believe in God was going to save them. How do, you, how do you get from the place of the storm has blown up, I, it's raging around me, it's surrounding me, it is consuming me, and I've lost hope. How do you get from that place? Because we've all been there, hadn't we? Amen. Come on, testify with a raise of a hand. You ever been to that place where the storm it seems like it is going to overwhelm you, overtake you, and you've lost hope? How do you get from that place to I know God will be faithful. That's a step. How do you take that step? Well, let's continue reading. Paul Paul writes this, and he says, Now I urge you, keep up your courage, because not one of you will be lost. Only the ship will will be destroyed. Here's how it happened. How could he say that? How could he go from no hope to, hey, guys, it's going to be all right. We're going to make it. Here's how it happened. Last night... An angel of the God to whom I belong and to whom I serve stood beside me and said, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand before Caesar. In other words, I've got plans for you. I've got a destiny for you beyond this storm. 
And God graciously has given you also the lives of all of those who sail with you. How do you get from that place of the storm is consuming me and, and, and taking me down and taking me under to it's going to be all right? It's because we need a word from the Lord. You've got to have a word from God. You've got to have a word from God. And if you have a word from God, it is as good as done. It's as sure as completed. One word from God will give you hope to ride out any storm that you face in life. Because when he speaks, it happens. When he says it, it is true. When he declares it, it is done in his name. How do you get from no hope to, to, to having confidence that everything's going to be all right? You've got to seek him. You've got to hear from him. And one word from God will give you all the hope you need to ride out the storms of life. A word from God. That's what we need. Here's a question. How many times do we really get a word for ourselves? Like, you might get a word from me. You might get a word from your favorite podcast preacher or TV preacher, whoever it is. But my, my challenge is, how many times have you, how many times has God spoken and there was not a middleman? It wasn't God through, a, through a this person and that person. No, it was God speaking to you. You received the word from the throne room. You received it, and it rested on your soul, and you walked in confidence and believed it. We need a word from God. How do you, how do you get that? You seek him. You spend time. You pray. Get in his word. Worst personal prayer and worship is the, is the fastest way and the best way I know to get a word from God. It's how you hear from him. Listen, when the future is bleak, one word from God will shine a light on any darkness. It will break any darkness. When hope is lost, one word from God will give you all the hope you need. When the doctor's report is bad, one word from God will see you through to your healing. All you need is a word from God. When your marriage is on the rocks and you don't know how to fix it, one word from God will restore that broken relationship and heal it for the rest of your family's heritage to see. One word from God is all we need to get us through the storm. You're not going to die. Paul, I love the way how God said this to Paul. Paul God said, look, I'm not just saying you're not going to die. Here's why you're not going to die. I got plans for you. Listen, I've got something for you to do. Some of you need to know that God's got a future hope and a plan for you. That this thing that you're facing, if it's cancer, if it's a situation, if it's a battle, that you, you, you don't see how you're going to make it. Listen, ask God what his future purpose is for you. God's vision for your future guarantees that you'll make it through the storm you're in. Let me say that again. God's vision for your future guarantees that you will make it through the storm you're in. God said, Paul, you're gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring you before Caesar. Therefore, you're going to make it through the storm. God's got plans for you. You're not going to be childless forever. He's got plans for your family, for you to have children, for you to have a heritage and a legacy. Amen? You're not going to die from this sickness. God's got plans for you. There are unfulfilled promises in your future that you are still alive to accomplish and fulfill in Jesus' name. Listen, you're not going to be broke forever just because your parents and your grandparents lived in debt up to their eyeballs their entire life does not mean that that's the way you're going to have to live for your entire life. God's got future and promise and prosperity in front of you. He's got plans for you. Amen. He's not finished with you yet. He's got people for you to bless. He's got opportunities for you to serve in. So we need a word from God to get us through the storm. The psalmist said this in Psalm 16. He said, I know the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken for he is right beside me. So here is what I want to share with you. It's not whether you're going to face a storm. You are. You're going to face a storm. What matters is this. It's all about who's with you in the boat. You're going to face a storm, but what really matters is who's with you in the boat. Matthew 8, you know the story. Disciples and Jesus got in a boat. They went to simply cross the, the Lake of Galilee. Just a, just a simple, not a long journey. But in that short journey, what happened? A storm out of nowhere blew up. 
tossed the ship. The ship, the, the scripture says the, 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 the boat was taking on water. Man, doesn't that, doesn't, don't storms do that sometimes in life? You feel like your life is taking on water. It's taking, we're taking on water. I'm going down. I'm drowning in this mess. I, I can barely tread water and stay afloat. I'm taking on water. That's where the disciples found them in, found themselves in. And in Matthew chapter 8, verses 25, 26, it says, the disciples went to Jesus. Man, that'll preach right there. When you're in the middle of a storm, you're taking on water, the boat's sinking. What did they do? They went to Jesus. Sometimes we need to just remind ourselves and stop going to this person in that way and trying this out and trying this solution and trying this out. Sometimes we just need to go to Jesus. Let's just, let's just go to Jesus. And they, they went to Jesus, and oddly enough, they found him asleep in the boat, which I think was, was just his uh, cynical way of saying, guys, really? Like, y'all know who I am? Like, I got this. <laughs> and they went to Jesus. They woke him up. They saying, Lord, save us. We're going to drown. Verse 26 says, he replied, oh, you of little faith. Why are you so afraid? He got up. He rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. Listen, when the storm rages around you, get to Jesus. When the winds begin to blow and, and begin to knock you all over the place, get to Jesus. When you don't know which way to turn, get to Jesus. When the, when the, when the waves are crashing over the walls of your boat and you're taking on water, get to Jesus. Get to Jesus when the winds of the storm come. Because one word from him can calm the storm. It's not a matter of if you go through storms. What matters is who's in your boat. Get to Jesus. Get a word from God. And I'm going to close with this. And this is the truth about storms. Every storm has a purpose. Amen. God wants to take what is bad, what seems evil, what seems destructive, what seems to cause you pain and heartache. God wants to take those storms in life and work them for our good. But it's not just for our good. What I've learned about storms is this. God will use what you learn in a storm to help somebody else get through their storms. God's going to use what he teaches you in the storm so that you can help another person in their storm. You survived cancer. That was a storm in your life. You didn't think you would get through it, but now here you are. And you're still alive, and you've got a story and a testimony. That doesn't just belong to you. You need to share that with the next person that you face that's fighting that same battle. You're the voice of hope. You're the light in the middle of their storm. You may have un overcome unfaithfulness in your marriage, and you, you saw the miraculous hand of God restore and heal that. Listen, God has positioned you to speak to another marriage that's facing those same troubled waters. You've climbed, you've worked out of, you worked yourself and climbed out of debt. Now here you are debt free and you're financially free. Listen, God didn't bring you to that place just for you to enjoy it. He brought you to that place so you can tell others they can too. They can do what you've done with his help. You haven't just been a year, two years, five years sober just because you needed to get your life together. You've been sober so that you can tell others they can do it too. That you, you're, you've been set free so that they can be set free. Amen. That they can have hope through your story. So listen, the storms in life, God wants to use those. He wants to work miracles. He wants to save us. He will. If we go to him, get a word from him, he will stand up and say, peace, be still. But when we come through that, he wants to use our story, our testimony, to help others get through their own storms. So I want to encourage you with this. As we face storms, we got to have faith. But our faith is in not what we see. Our faith is in what God says. What has he said? What has God said to you? Whatever he says is sure. It's as good as done. If I were to say, take what God has said to you and hold it in your hand, would you have something or would your hand be empty? If you don't have that in your hand, you need to get it. You need to seek his face until he places a word in your hand. 
Because you're going to need that word. You're going to need that to hold on to when the winds begin to blow, when the rains begin to fall, when the waves begin to crash. If I were to ask you right now, what has God spoken to you? If you find yourself empty handed then let's seek God. God, I need a word from you. Get to Jesus. He's got a word of plans, destiny, future, peace, prosperity for you. You need that in your hand today. Amen. Amen. Psalm 46 says, God is our refuge and our strength. He's an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam and mountains quake with their surging, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of our God. Amen. Would you bow your heads and let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for every person that is going through a storm this morning. The waves may be crashing. Their boat is taking on water. This storm may have seems like it, it's blown up out of nowhere. And now they find themselves in it. And fear has set in. They may be at the place like Paul admitted he was in. He had lost all hope. Father, I pray for any person going through that storm. They're not alone. You are Emmanuel. You are with them. So as they face it today, God, first of all, I pray that, that they get to you, Jesus. They get to where you are. They seek you and they get a word from you. That word that says that you have plans for them. You have a destiny for them beyond this storm. A word of hope that will give them faith to carry through. With every head bowed and every eye closed, you say, Pastor David, I'd love for you to just pray for me right where I am. I'm going through a storm. Would you just raise your hand? I see your hand. God bless you. God bless you. Anyone else say, I'm going through a storm in my life. I've lost hope. But I see today through Paul's story, through the story of the disciples, that I'm going to make it. I see your hands. Amen. Father, you see every hand that was raised. And I pray that you will be the master of their storm. Cause fear to tremble and leave. Let faith arise. Let doubt and despair be scattered. And speak to their storms. You're the one who created the universe. You created weather systems. You created it all, Jesus. It was made by you, through you, and for you. So I pray for every person facing a storm. They would get to you, get a word from you, and watch you speak peace to their storm. In Jesus' name, God, we thank you for it. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your grace and your love. Amen and amen. Can we all stand to our feet?